Hello, everyone. So, um, after some time and some thought, deliberation, I decided to uh, to put a to make a video with my old username in it um, because I was hoping that uh, maybe some of the people who had um, enjoyed my channel before could, you know, it would give them a way of finding my new channel. And, um, yeah, and I just hope that, um, the negative forces that have acted, um, in my real life don't affect my, um, my virtual platform. So, yeah, um, I, you know, I, my face, like, I looked in the mirror, and my face, like, it's really red. Like, it's usually red because of the HRT, but, um, I don't know, like, it looks really red. My cheeks look really red. I don't know why. Um, so, because this video doesn't really have a focus, I was just going to talk about some stuff, kind of like a vlog, um, so just some random stuff. Um, and no, I am not cosplaying as Dr. Z, Ph.D. Um, if you are not familiar with with uh, Dr. Z, well, I'll show you a picture of her right now so you can see why I say that. Yeah, so... I didn't do this because of her, I did it before, and then I found her channel, and I was like, oh wow. And it's funny that she's a, a gender therapist, specializes in that. I am... Um, so I've been trying to get my letters together for my bottom surgery, and it's been... It's taken almost a year, and it's... The letters I got were rejected by the insurance company, Medicaid, and, um, so I'm, like, ripping my hair out, and, um, and funny enough, you know, I, I don't know why I didn't, well, okay, when I started to get my letters, I didn't have, I wasn't knowledgeable about the, um, assets in the community, uh, like, Facebook groups and things like that, so, uh, recently I've, I've joined a few Facebook, Facebook groups, and, um, uh, queer and trans groups, and um, finally I I solicited their um, their help, and um, just today actually I spoke with a um, a gender therapist. I didn't I wasn't aware that that there was such a thing as a gender therapist. Um, that's how kind of you know lost in the woods I I was. Um, perhaps I still am, but. Um, um, for a hundred bucks, you know, he, uh, he writes the letter, you know, he does an assessment. And, uh, excuse me, and, um, you get your letter within 24 hours, and then, you know, um, but you need two letters, which is stupid. I mean, it's, I shouldn't need to go to a therapist to get a letter anyway. Being transgender does not mean you're crazy, you know. Um, in no other type of healthcare do does anyone have to see a therapist. Someone wants to get a boob job and they're cisgender, they don't have to see a fucking therapist. But if you're transgender, you do. Which again is the system hitting us over the head with a sledgehammer and saying, "No, you're crazy, and we're going to do everything we can to." limit your ability to realize your full and true self. And uh, we call it gatekeeping in the community, and I am really fucking sick of it. So, yeah. But um, I have one letter, at least, from a guy who's been writing them for, like, 16 years. You know? So I can't imagine them... I mean, I can't imagine them rejecting the letter, but I, there, there's, it would be ridiculous for them to do so. And I would... 
find a lawyer and take them to court and sue their fucking asses if they rejected this this letter because again they've accepted all of his other letters before he's never had one denied or rejected um, so if they did reject mine that I got from him it, it would be clear that it would be a very you know they would be targeting me or they would be targeting the community now you know now that their guys lost the election um, Unfortunately, there are a lot of right-wing Nazi assholes who've infiltrated the U.S. government. That's why we have the problems that we have, you know, with cops letting terrorists through the gates that they themselves set up so these assholes can go and, you know, try to murder the vice president, whom I, I have no love for Mike Pence, okay? But um, these are members of his own party, quote-unquote. They're They want to murder him, you know? Like, yeah, um, that's where America is now. Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, but I do have to get one more letter. And this therapist, he got me a link and got me kind of a list of names and stuff like that. Um, so now I know what a gender therapist is. Um, I, I know that there are people who specialize in other parts of transgender care. Um, you know, MDs who do that, but, um, I didn't know that that was a thing in therapy, and uh, so, and I, I don't personally feel like I need it, just because I'm so certain of, of who I am, you know, and, and what I need to um, complete my transition, you know, and what would make me um, feel complete, so to speak. So, yeah, uh, for me, I don't, I don't see the point in going to a therapist for my gender um, identity or So yeah, there's that. Uh, coronavirus, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I was gonna do a video about coronavirus, uh, another one, um, because there's been some new developments lately, and um, I wanted to to put it out there, just you know, so people know. And you know, I don't have that many subscribers or viewers. Um, but I think that every little bit helps. You know, that's why I talk about certain subjects. Regardless, I mean, if I only have one subscriber, I'll do that. You know, because there's a possibility that other people might come along later. And which often happens. So, but uh, the uh, British strain of coronavirus has, um, has come to the United States and the first known case is in, of course, western Washington state, specifically Snohomish County, um, which interestingly, the first known case of coronavirus was in Everett, my old hometown. And um, Everett, Washington, and the first outbreak known in the U.S., the first deadly known outbreak, um, was actually in a, uh, a, a retirement home in uh, Kirkland, Washington. Now, some people have said, well, you know, I, I mean, you think, well, why, why is it so focused right here, you know? Well, the fact is that Washington State was doing testing more reliable testing long before any other state. And so naturally the number of cases here would be high because we have more testing going on and um, and uh, and so you would find more cases, more instances and you know yeah so that's why. Um, yeah now the British strain is here. Great. Um, there's also another thing about coronavirus, but I'll leave that for the other video. Basically, I don't want to fear monger, but um, the coronavirus is going to be with us for a long time. And um, it's never going to go away. People are going to become immunized, and, you know, we're going to build up um, 
immunities to it, you know, uh, through the vaccination and through just time, things like that. Um, but if we're lucky, the coronavirus will do what many other um, viruses in the past have done, and they will become their effects will be minimized over time. And so eventually this coronavirus, COVID-19, will, um, named as such because it it was discovered in 2019, it will um, eventually, it could take years or decades, but it will eventually, hopefully, um, become no more deadly than the common cold. You know, um, all these strains that, that you know, the common cold and flu and all this stuff, that's, it started off as like, you know, this kind of a heavy duty virus that would kill people. And over time, you know, through uh, science and through our understanding of it and through the basic biological processes of, of our bodies, you know, um, the effects of it were lessened over time. But it's taken, you know, it takes a long time sometimes. So, um, nothing just like goes away, you know. Oh, it's gonna be—it's gonna be a miracle. No, there's no such fucking things as miracles. You don't—you don't say, "Oh, well, um, I can't make my rent next month, so um, a miracle will happen, and I'll just happen to get the money." No, you don't count on that. That's not your go-to. Your go-to is, I need to get some more fucking money. You know? Um, I mean, is your fucking landlord going to accept, Oh, I, I have a miracle. I, I'll, I'll have your money once the miracle comes. No, they're not going to fucking accept that. They're going to be like, get the fuck out. Unfortunately, you know, I wish places were more forgiving with that shit. Especially these days. I know there's moratoriums and that kind of thing, but um, some places aren't abiding by that because they've got dipshits in, in government who allow people to be, you know, to be evicted and made homeless. Anyway. Yeah. So, um... Oh, I noticed that I have uh, at least one subscriber who, um whose name was familiar. Um, nice to see you. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's, um, I was planning on doing this video for a long time, but seeing their name and, you know, remembering them from the different, you know, iterations of my social media um, kind of gave me a little kick in the ass to, to finally do this, you know, um, so, yeah, and I got, I got new hair, well, it's not new, I mean, you know, I just have the bangs done, and it's longer, I, when I first got my hair done, when I first got my bangs done, um, I brought in a picture of Louise Brooks, because I wanted bangs that were straight, she, I don't know why, but she was entirely incapable of cutting a, a straight line with bangs. You would think it would be the easiest fucking thing in the world. You know, you just, you know, cut a line. But um, it was always fucked up in one way or another. And so I had to go to a new stylist. Because um, I was having to pay twice. I was having to pay her to do my hair. And then I was having to go to another stylist at some cheap place and have them do it because they actually could cut a straight line. But I don't like going to these cheap places. I mean, yeah, they're cheap, um, but some of the people in there are just... No. No. But, um, but yeah, when I, when I first got my hair done with the bangs, she, she took the Louise Brooks thing a little too literally. I just I wanted to, her to model the bangs off of Louise Brooks' hair, um, but she did the whole thing, and so my so the hair was like up to here, you know. I was like, oh my god, it's so short. I mean, I've had it that short before, and it was fine, but that's what I was going for. I wasn't going for that this time. So um, 
I've finally kind of grown it out, and you know, I say leave, leave more on the front. I still like it, you know, it's still high in the back and and whatnot. And if you want to see videos or pictures of my hair, how it looks now beyond just the front, um, you can go to my Patreon, and um, um, you can see pictures and videos where I talk about stuff, and I have outtakes and all kinds of other stuff on there. So, uh, yeah, but I, I think it, it looks better now, I think, longer. So, for me, you know, other people, I think, can pull it off, but my face, I've got really fat cheeks. I always have. So, um, so I, you know, having it longer in the front frames your face a little better. Because, you know, you have all these hard edges, all these round edges on my face get kind of exaggerated. So, yeah. But I, I'm pretty happy with it. I, there was a long time, I spent a long fucking time, I'm talking years, thinking, oh, do I get bangs, do I not get bangs? And, um, finally I decided to just jump in and say, fuck it, I'm going to do this. So I did it. wasn't happy at first because of, again, the problems with my stylist. But eventually I got it to the point where I was happy with it now. So, relatively so. Um, so, yeah. I just wish my bangs were like, like my hair was thicker. Like my hair isn't super thin. It's kind of in between where my mom and dad's hair is. Because my mom has really fine hair and my dad has kind of, not thick hair, but it's average. I guess. Um, and mine is in between, you know. And like I mentioned, Dr. Z, her hair is so thick. And I'm like, why can't I have my hair like that, you know? Why can't my bangs be super thick? Uh, but, whatever. Can't change that. So, yeah. Um, sometimes I write stuff down, you know, so I can remember what the hell it was I was going to talk about or say. Sometimes I don't. I just wing it. Now, uh, yeah. In those videos, I end up having to do more editing. But uh, yeah, so I was listening to um, Biden's speech, his inauguration speech, and um, he. I understand what he was trying to do, but. I think that he was saying things in there that just weren't true. You know, like how America, how our better angels have won out. It's like, well, tell that to the Iraqis. You know, or to the people of Afghanistan, whose loved ones have been blown apart by American bombs. You know, tell that to all the uh, non-white people in this country who've had a fucking cop with their fucking boot on their throat, you know, for decades of their lives. Tell it. They're... People's... Not everyone has a conscience. And not everyone thinks logically. Not everyone has the intellect necessary, I guess, to, under, to understand... Empathy, compassion, you know. It's like that's why you had a bunch of people storm the Capitol. That's why you had a bunch of cops let those people storm the fucking Capitol. That's why the fucking Capitol Police were not on fucking red alert. There was just a handful of them by comparison to, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests where there was, what, how many of them? Hundreds? So, um, no, this country has made it very clear that it does not have better angels. We've seen four years of nothing but the fucking devil, you know, quote-unquote, um, ruling. Trump was fucking evil. And the people that liked him are fucking evil. And there's a fucking lot of them, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, and I've gone into it in other videos. You know, lack of education and, and uh, propaganda, you know, started by a lot of the guys from the Nixon administration back in the 70s. Um, and it's like, now we, this is what we have. It's a fucking cesspool. 
81 million people who probably generally want everyone to be uplifted and want people, you know, want equality for everyone. And then 75 million people who don't want equality. They want to have, they want to be the Nazis. And they want to eliminate anyone whom they perceive as to be lesser than them. Where are the better angels there? There aren't any, you know? Um, and he said a lot of other stuff that was, pie, you know, like pie in the sky. Oh, we're so great. No, we're not. He said, Ameri like, he said something to the effect of America has always won or something. It's like, really? Did we win Vietnam? Were we winning then? Were we winning during the... Uh, during McCarthyism? You know? Were we winning for so many centuries before um, the Civil Rights Movement really, you know, made traction and made waves? Here's the thing. We are not winning if any portion of our citizenry is losing. We are not winning if that quote-unquote winning comes at the expense of other people. You know, I I understand he's he's doing the politician thing. Look at how great we are, because if he comes out and says we're fucked up, we have a lot of problems, you know, um, all the Nazis are going to boo him, but it's like, let them fucking boo him. Fuck them. They're Nazis. They're the enemy. You know? They were the fucking enemy in fucking World War II. We fought those assholes. And now we're having to fight them here. Because all those same mentalities have existed this whole time. And they've been fostered. The flames of this stuff have been um, have been kept going. You know? I, there, Biden is doing some really good things. But he's also doing some not so good things. You know? And um, it would be nice to get someone who is honest, who says, we're fucked up. We need to get our shit together. And the people who who created all of the problems are going to pay. They're going to be held accountable. Not through public executions or anything like that, but through the legal system, and they will actually be held accountable. Um, if Biden wanted Trump impeached, he'd be fucking impeached. Biden has been saying for so long, oh, well, let's just move past it. No! No! That's what gives these assholes the sense that they can do it and get away with it because they do just get away with it. We didn't hold Bush and Cheney accountable. We haven't held Trump accountable. Not yet. We, I mean, there are fucking business owners whom are holding Trump more accountable than the United States fucking government. It's just, it's... It's aggravating. It's like Biden is doing a lot of the same things that Obama did. And I suspect he's doing it because he thinks that... Because Obama was was maintained a, de a degree of popularity after he fucked us, basically, and, and allowed Bush and Cheney to just get away with everything that they did, um, I think Biden thinks that he'll have the same success. But it's a different time. The radicalization of the right has gone, you know, it's just, it's bloated um, and gone to to dangerous degrees since the Bush years, you know, and not holding these assholes accountable um, helps that. It just fuels that fire of hatred and division and everything else. You don't heal a country by allowing those that wounded the country to go away without consequences, to get away scot-free. I mean, think about it. 
Think about a member of your family. Say they get murdered. Naturally, you would want the perpetrators of that um, of their murder to be held accountable. So, if the court said, you know what, they murdered your family member, but we're going to move on. You know, we don't need to we don't need to deal with this pain anymore. Would you be more or less um, healed? You know, is it better that we just let everyone get away with their crimes and say, oh, we're moving on? No, of course not. That doesn't work for, you know, us, us fucking peasants. But they always do it with the fucking big guys. The fucking ex-presidents and fucking ex-whoever. You know? The American people are getting real fucking tired of that. We're getting real fucking tired of seeing it. And, um... You know... A lot of people, not just progressives, but people on the left, I think, um, were disappointed in Obama. The fact that he he didn't hold these assholes accountable. You know, the fucking Great Recession was a direct result of right-wing policies. Didn't hold them accountable. Didn't hold the fucking banks accountable. So what message does that send to the politicians and the banks and the rich guys? It sends a message, you can get away with it, and we'll let you do it over and over and over again. What message does it send to the American people? It says, fuck you, you're nothing, we're the government, and we don't give a fuck. It sends all the wrong messages to everyone. The problem is that all these leaders on the left, people in power, have always been weak. They always defer to the Republicans. Or they say, oh, we have to we have to find out what the Republicans think. No, we fucking don't. You have a fucking... Like, you have control of the whole fucking government. Use it. That's why we gave it to you. We didn't put you in power so you could just get all mealy-mouthed and go, oh, you know what, we're going to let Donald Trump, you know live out his life in peace. Fuck you. We don't want that. We want the guy to suffer. Because he made millions, millions upon millions across this whole fucking planet suffer. They didn't even have a fucking plan for distributing the fucking vaccines. You're not going to hold them accountable for that? Millions of people across this planet have died because of that. Because of their inaction. Because of they didn't care. I mean... That's just unconscionable. I, I as a human being, if we took the... If we scaled it down, I as a human being could not condone or allow another human being who took hundreds of or thousands of lives, I could not let them go, you know, for doing that, if they just let people die. Society, as a thing, as a fabric, demands that these people be held accountable, you know, um, on many different levels, as I just explained. So, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of some of this fucking democratic rhetoric of, oh, unity at all costs. Oh, you fucking idiots. They didn't learn anything. They've learned nothing in fucking 12 fucking years. 12 years they've learned nothing. Oh, my God. I just want to fucking hit him over the head, you know? Get him to fucking... But, I mean, you see fucking Kamala Harris doing, like, a, an elbow bump with fucking uh, Lindsey Graham. You know, and laughing with the guy who's actively trying to prevent them from, from
from rightfully taking power. It's like, how can you be friends with this asshole? He's, he's the enemy. But the thing is, they don't perceive it that way. They think, we're all senators, we're all the rich government guys. You know, we're all the big wigs. So we're all in it together. And they view the rest of us as just fucking peasants. You know, something to be crushed under their, their boot heel. You know? The Democrats will at least profess, oh no, we're on your side. Then the Republicans push back, oh well, uh, we have to defer to the Republicans and let them do whatever they want, even if it fucks you. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway. This video's been long enough. Um, so... Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, there might be a couple of videos coming up um, that I'm going to ask you guys to to share with others just so the, the story can be heard um, by as many people as possible. I don't often do this, um, but I think it would do a lot of good. So... Um, you, those videos are coming. Um, I have to edit one of them and and then make one of them, make another one. Um, so anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Bye.